Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to something a little bit different. So today we are not, we're not at Disney. We're actually in Claremont. Now I had an appointment here and I thought I might as well take you guys to the appointment with me um, and tell you a little bit about Claremont. So here we are. Now Claremont is one of those places that's kind of near Disney, Universal, Orlando, but not really near any of those places. Uh, it really depends on what you're looking for, but I wanted to talk about it because since it's in that general vicinity, I know that some of you who may be looking for maybe a house to rent or something, maybe a hotel that's off property, might hear about Claremont and you're like, hmm, interesting. I know that there are some people who are considering moving down to this area who also might think that Claremont is interesting. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about it maybe go see some of the things in this local area once we're done with the business side of things today. And um, yeah, just give you a sense of this space. Now, when we were considering Central Florida, we did look at Claremont. We decided against Claremont for a few different reasons, but that's kind of a discussion for another day or really not at all because we had personal wants and needs and I'm sure you have personal wants and needs for yourself. So anyway, let's get a little bit of the basics out of the way. Claremont. Claremont's a tricky place. One of the reasons for that is because of its shape. So it's shaped a little bit like a T. Um, it, it's wide, but it's long. Uh, so that can make it a tricky place, at least in my opinion, when you're trying to find reference points and when you're trying to talk about distance from other places. So you might say, oh, well, you know, Claremont is you know, 30 minutes from Walt Disney World, for example, but a very specific point in Claremont might be 30 minutes from Walt Disney World. Another area in Claremont might be 45 to an hour away. So really pay attention to that when you're looking. And this is important to understand too, because where it's situated and where you might be coming from and or maybe going might not be like a major highway. So there's a lot of stop and go. So today we're kind of in that spot right where the, the upper part of the T and the lower part of the T meets. We'll talk about some other reference points later, but I found that it was a lot of stop and go kind of back roads type traffic today. So it did take me about 45 minutes to get here from the art of animation area ish at Walt Disney World. So that's just something to be aware of if you're considering this area. Right off the bat though, just kind of coming in, man, it is beautiful. It does have like, it's known for its like hills and lakes. I didn't stumble upon any lakes yet, but we did get to see the beautiful like hills in the distance as we were driving in, which was really, really nice. Um, it's quiet. The route that I was driving along was kind of along a state park as well. So a beautiful thing about this kind of area is, at least in my opinion, that you get this like kind of out of the way, but not really that out of the way. You know, like an area like this in a place like Minnesota, for example, would probably be like three, two to three hours away from that city environment. This is not two to three hours away from a city environment. So something to be aware of. Anyway, we got, we got appointments. So we're going to go do that. We'll check back in in a bit. With all that business out of the way, it's time to have a little bit of fun. And we're starting off by driving a little bit further down the road toward the Citrus Tower. That's actually where we are right now. The Citrus Tower is one of those things that it's like, it's a tourist attraction. It claims to be, I think, one of the first tourist attractions in the area. But you probably wouldn't have heard about it if you weren't poking around. So we're going to make our way in. I think it's like 10, 11 bucks to get up to the top of the tower. I'm looking forward to it because this should be a beautiful view. Let's go. All right, we're making our way up. Looks like there's some cool information right here on the elevator wall. Um, it ends up being 11 bucks, but they do have discounts for first responders and whatnot. I'm excited. I'm excited to go see the views.
Okay, the Citrus Tower was really, really cool. Um, actually, I have to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting it to be what it was. I did know that it was a tower that you could go to the top, ride the elevator to the top. I knew it was gonna be like 10, 11 bucks. But what I didn't realize is that it's kind of like a cafe. So there is a cafe down below and you can go and enjoy whatever it is that they have. Um, there but what i didn't realize is that for 11 bucks you can go up to the top and enjoy your drink or your snack or whatever from these like counters that are all around the tower and honestly that is so cool it's really beautiful up there as you guys saw um wow really really awesome now they do have annual memberships and whatnot so you can come back repeatedly if you are in this area and you really want to enjoy that tower whenever you want so that's kind of cool but i did get a drink because as soon as i came back down i smelled something amazing and i asked the woman who was working there i said what is that delicious smell because i need some of that and she said it was the orange buttercream. I was like, ring me up for one of those. So I got one and man, this is delicious. It tastes like orange with buttercream icing, but not like heavy, like buttercream. Like it tastes like orange buttercream. That's it. It tastes like orange buttercream. It's so, so good. So um, definitely, definitely worth a try. Anyway, look, this this is exactly the type of place I love to come visit because it's like out of the way. It's a tourist attraction, but it's not the type of tourist attraction that's going to draw in tons and tons of people. I mean, maybe it does, but it seems like a hole in the wall kind of place. Um, so yeah, I just had a lot of fun kind of coming here and exploring this. There are other tourist attractions in this area. In fact, there's one right behind me, um, which is a replica of the White House. We're not going to do that today. We're going to save that <laughs> for another day because um, I have to take Russ back here. He's going to love this, and I can't wait to share that with him. So, But yeah, these are the things I live for. These are the things that I really loved exploring when we were in Japan. I stumbled upon a few of them here and there as we were traveling through the country, but they're not as accessible, not as close as this one was, and we happen to be here anyway, so yeah, that was fun. Anyway, kind of going back to our conversation about Claremont as an area, as you can see, it's definitely like wide and sprawling. There are definitely some lakes. Claremont's known for lakes and its hills. I think I mentioned that before. There are also a number of residential neighborhoods here. It's not um, a town known for tourism. I know some places you might read that it is, but it's more of like a place you would come to live. So, um, but yeah, anyway, let's make our way back home. And if we see anything interesting along the way, we'll stop and check it out. Kind of making our way through one of the more residential areas. You can get a sense of what it looks like here. Some of the houses are older, others are definitely like new developments, so get an idea of what Claremont looks like from this from this angle, if you will. Okay, we're back home now, freshened up. And I wanted to just wrap up our day because I didn't stop anywhere else. The reason for this is mainly because the route that I took back. So if you remember earlier today, we talked about the route to get to Claremont being kind of back roads, um, lots of stoplights, stuff like that. But there were a number of things that you could have stopped and done along that route. The route to get back home took longer. So as opposed to the first uh, the first route was what 35 to 40 minutes to get to Claremont of course that was earlier in the day 
few hours later, later in the day, it actually was going to be more efficient for me to take the second route, which had me going on the turnpike. So that took me about 45 minutes to get back home, 45, 50 minutes to get back home. And that had me heading toward Orlando and then past Universal, past SeaWorld. So that's something to be aware of if you're going to be taking that route. Also, if you are taking that route, it does take a little bit longer, is a toll road. So be aware of that. Sun Pass makes it a little bit more affordable. We can talk about that some other time, especially if you're living here or if you're going to be coming back regularly and driving, doing a lot of toll roads. Sun Pass can be a huge help. But anyway, after doing this trip, I mean, it was lovely. It was nice. I would say that if you're considering staying in the Claremont area as part of like a vacation, I don't know, I would think twice. I don't necessarily think it's the best place to stay. There are places that are a bit closer and I think will be easier to get to Walt Disney World or Universal even, even SeaWorld as well. But I know Universal and Disney are the big like heavy hitters in the area. So if you're going to be visiting those areas and that's going to be like the focus of your trip, I wouldn't recommend staying in the Claremont area. I don't know if anyone actually does stay out there. So let me know if that's something that's ever like occurred to you but it is quite the drive it is quite the drive and I think that it's excessive I don't think that it is worth staying out there for that if you're going to do a day trip maybe you want to head to Claremont see some of the you know fun things there are to see out there if you're going to live in Claremont you're considering that then I, I think it's a nice area I don't know any of the information about like how much housing costs out there or anything like that so you'd have to do your research but it is beautiful and it is it's far out but not so far that you're like way out there you know so you're still within an hour from a number of things and i think that is pretty good but that's basically it for today don't worry though we're gonna head back out there i want to take russ like i mentioned earlier to the citrus tower and some of the other little tourist attractions that we stumbled upon i also want to go check out historic Claremont. There's like a little, um, I don't know, historic part of town, I suppose. So go check that out one of these days. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see in the comments down below. Have you ever been to Claremont? Tell us about it in the comments down below. But for now, that's all. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.